once and always a warm welcome for a warming planet. Indeed, we begin our search today for what is in the sky. Today we search, we look up into the sky, acknowledging that there are messengers of sorts visiting the earth. Today our topic is not so much man-made or external visitors from other worlds. Today we look grander. Today we look further. Indeed there are messengers that come from far and away and beyond this solar system, far into the reaches of the universe. And these are those that we would call meteors at times Asteroids will come as well. So we will speak about those that bring messengers from elsewhere for humanity and for Gaia, for the Earth as well. As long as the Earth has been in existence and before then as well, all of the universe has been alive. The universe is alive and at play. The universe is always in a state of discovery just as you are. The universe expands and, in essence, contracts, but not so that you would notice it. The universe then seeks in the same way that you seek. It seeks to know itself, to understand itself. The universe is alive, and every particle of thought, every particle of energy, every particle that follows every comet is an aspect of aliveness, following, leading, showing the way. Those things that light up in the sky have a very particular kind of awareness about them. Just as you see certain individuals appear to be more luminous than others, perhaps brighter, more creative, more interesting in some way, well, the same is true of the skies. Even in the darkness of space, there are those objects that simply are more luminous, more aware. They reflect light more. Now, you might say to yourself, well, it is because it is a meteor. After all, it is made of ice and metals and other reflective material. Yes, the physical properties could be identified in that way, but it is more than that as well. There is a lightness, quality, around certain objects, and their aliveness is simply more alive than others. It is not the same as consciousness, but there is an aliveness to it. For instance, those things that contain information in some ways are a little bit more alive than those that do not. A book is a little bit more alive than a table, for instance, because it serves a purpose that can serve again and again. It conveys information. It can be in dialogue with you. There is an author's words behind that book. There was a created aliveness there as well. So again, it is the same with those objects in the night sky, those objects, those travelers, round the world, round the universe. In the same way that there are certain beings that travel the universe for purposes of their own making, in the same way that there are lifetimes that call you from here to there, again it is the same with those things of the sky. Therefore, objects in the sky that appear to be random, asteroids that do not have a particular perfect orbit, they too have a unique purpose about them. And that is our subject for today, the purpose and the messages that asteroids and meteors and even eclipses have for the Earth, for Gaia, and for you. Typically, in these discussions, we speak of humanity. We speak of the benefits to you of this or of that. We speak of cautions in one way or another. 
helping you to look into small nooks and crannies and places where you would not look for wisdom of your own. And this subject is near to that perspective as well. You would not think necessarily of a meteor as having a particular interest for you or a message for you. You are aware that eclipses have a significance in your chart of astrology and that these in some way carry an energy or a message as well. But you have not put it all together and that is what we hope to do in this speaking now. So the earth itself is a living library as you know it has been referred to this way before. You are part of that library. If you like you are a very unique entry in that library and indeed as you know you are very alive and seeking to be more alive more conscious you hunt up certain clues as to the meaning of life as to your purpose in life you look for when some of these will share themselves with you and you look to see how best to use what you discover to best advantage in your life the earth does the same and the earth does this by receiving the light of all that passes near the earth in some way. The earth receives light, as you well know, from the sun all of the time. And there is also that which is called the midnight sun. The midnight sun is the aspect of the sun that you cannot see. It is the part of you that offers to you wisdom, but you do not know where it comes from. In some ways it is akin to a difficult period, but not necessarily. The midnight sun does not bring difficulties, it simply points them out, the ones that were already there. All suns illumine your path, so even that which would be a dark sun or a bright sun would bring about a certain illuminating truth to you, something that perhaps you had overlooked, something that may be significant in a certain moment. So we begin here. When you have an eclipse, when you participate or behold an eclipse, it is displacing something. One light is being displaced by another. The moon's light is being displaced by a shadow of the sun. In a solar eclipse it is different, but again something is being displaced. Every year you also displace a certain energy. As you travel round the houses of your astrological charts, you displace something. You sit in a house. You house sit, if you like, in a house that is not entirely yours. You move through it, sometimes quickly and sometimes more slowly. So it is the same with an eclipse. The earth then temporarily house sits under a different light. It is illumined by a different quality and that quality has interesting effects and news for the earth. Whenever the quality of light changes upon the earth, the earth changes as well. For instance, if you are shocked or surprised by something, your breathing changes. You hold your breath. You hold it up high in your chest. You let it out very slowly or in a very guarded way. Or you take a very deep breath or a deep sigh. Some part of you prepares for something. The earth does the same. And so under certain qualities of the light of the eclipse, the earth changes how it holds a certain light, what it does, how long it holds it for. It changes the frequency and the vibration of the earth. Therefore, everything, everything upon the earth is at least temporarily, momentarily changed as well. Eclipses then bring news to you and to the earth. They bring awareness. They bring something new into the moment that was not there before. How do they do that? By changing the quality of the light. All things work in terms of frequency or vibration and light, light and sound. If you change the quality of the light, you also change or adjust the quality of the sound, of the vibration. 
of the resonance. Under conditions of a certain eclipse, then, the Earth changes, adjusts its resonance to a different key, as it would be. This is beneficial to some aspects of the Earth, but can bring about some challenges to other aspects. For instance, eclipses can cause earthquakes. They do not directly cause the Earth to quake or to shake. However, they change the resonance, the frequencies of the Earth. Light and sound upon and within the Earth change, sometimes very quickly, depending upon the length of the eclipse, depending on from where it has come and where it appears in the sky and what particular lunation cycle the Earth and Moon relationship are in as well. All of these aspects that you may take for granted, and in fact you can continue to take for granted, have a very unique effect upon the earth and upon humanity. Again, I tell you that what befalls or affects the earth also affects every single human being, every particle upon the earth, every element, and every kingdom. Even if it is not a visible effect, it is, in fact, a rather significant effect, particularly on some years and during some cycles of the calendar. Eclipses then bring at times a reflection of the sunlight, what we call the midnight sun. The midnight sun then is that which turns off certain automatic wisdoms of the earth and puts everything on a manual perspective, if you like. Perhaps that is a appropriate metaphor to use. Imagine that you have been on automatic pilot attending to all of your chores, all of your purposes, and then something is changed so that you must, you must remove the automatic pilot and you must begin to sort things out, to figure things out on your own. Sometimes you may call this a new beginning or a next beginning. In essence, you are in manual mode. Everything that worked before does not work now. You must begin again. A new beginning, then, is not necessarily a challenge. In fact, it can be quite delightful. So again, I tell you that the midnight sun is not that which brings challenges. It simply points them out. It points out what you have not attended to, and it even points out some things that may be highly beneficial to you that you may not have noticed as well. It may point to where the new cycle is, what it looks like, where you could better be, how you might better be. It can point to creative aspects of you that you have not taken the time or the chance to learn about yet. So again, I remind you that it is not necessarily a difficult challenge. It is not necessarily adversity. The midnight sun, then, is active now, which is why I have chosen this topic for today. The midnight sun is active because there is now a series, one more to go, of eclipses rounding out the earth now. These eclipses then, in the order as they have been arranged, have triggered the quality of the sun, the midnight sun, adjusted with certain sun spot activity, certain ejections from the sun's corona, and all of this changes the light upon the earth, the magnetics upon the earth are also affected, electricity charges upon the earth are also affected. So here you have then the sparking of more fires upon the earth, sun being the element most associated with the element of fire. You have then the triggers that there are more fires now upon the earth and there will continue to be more. Perhaps you have noticed that again there is volcanic activity has come again also associated with the element of fire then and in this case the sun or the midnight sun. So what may seem to you to be many unrelated events and in some ways they are unrelated but it is the frequency itself what is being displaced something has been moved something has shifted so that the midnight sun can sit 
where it does, and it affects all things differently. If you sit in the dark, you will feel quite differently than when you sit in a brightly lit room. When you sit in the shade, you feel quite differently than you do again in bright sunlight. And so the earth also then pauses during these moments to reflect and to receive a different quality of light and the resonance then of the earth changes during this case and so does yours then. The midnight sun, the light of all that is earth then, this comes about in the greater truths, in the greater schemes and it will change almost everything. It can change the earth overnight, this midnight sun. Eclipses bring news then, because it is a perfect combination then of the earth and the sun and the moon. There is a combination between the three that they are now superimposed over one another. They act as one for a short displacement time, for a short burst of cyclic energy that is being released then. And as you participate with that, and know it does not matter whether you pay attention to the eclipse or even know about it or not, the earth knows, receives, benefits in the process, and then, of course, so do you and all of the other kingdoms and elements. All those aspects of nature benefit and are moved by that process as well. So the earth then receives these messages, and we call them messages from home, because in essence it is the entire universe that tilts in such a way as to receive this. It is indeed exactly how the earth positions itself in relation to the sun and how the sun is in relation to other aspects of the universe that make eclipses and make aspects of this stand out in the day or in a certain year. Every eclipse is unique unto itself. Even if the same eclipse were to happen every year or every four years in the same sign, its energy would be different because the earth would be different, because you would be different, because everything that is upon and within the earth will have changed during that time. So every eclipse is a unique and individual event. No two are alike, nor are the messages that they bring. You may, for instance, open a newspaper every day and say, oh look, it is the same bad news on the same page, but it is not. The world has changed, and whether or not it is reported in the same way or not, in fact, everything upon the earth is quite different from day to day, and in your life as well, even if you think that there is very little difference between one day or one year and the next. Now, as we continue to study, then, the skies and the other messengers would be appropriate, would be well and important to notice that the Earth now is being visited by a few more comets than it had in the past. Now, is this true? Well, to be perfectly fair, not exactly. Humanity now and its technology and in some ways it favors humanity, is able to notice now comets at a further distance away. And so those that centuries ago would have gone completely unnoticed, well, now you have technology and many, many more peoples looking at the skies, studying them and hoping to find something. And by the way, if you are hoping to find something, it is likely that you will. If you are hoping to find a certain truth, it is likely that you will. If you are hoping to find a certain message or to have one delivered to you, it is likely that you will receive that because hope ignites the ability to search. Here, it is a little bit like one of your search engines there. That is perhaps well put. And so hope, sweet ones, Keep it very alive and well. Keep it with you every day. 
Does hope have something to do with the law of chances and such? Yes. Is it orchestrated in some ways? Yes. Is it also part of something that cannot be proven as to whether it truly exists or not? Oh, yes, but keep it in your pocket just the same, because in another time and another place we will also explain to you exactly how hope and faith work so that you will be able to use it like clockwork, but in ways that are a little bit different than you imagine and a little bit different than how you employ them now. But that is an aside, and perhaps you will forgive me for deviating from our important subject for just a moment. Now then, messengers from the sky, messages from home. As we continue then, the meteors have a very particular message for the earth. Humanity at times and throughout history has feared meteors. It seemed as if they were always the bearers of bad news. Well, it is not necessarily so. However, it is true that they do bear news. They do bear information. When a meteor comes close enough to the sun and close enough to the earth, which would be anywhere almost in this solar system, everything begins to change and begins to adjust to it. And depending upon how close or which planet it is more associated with, well, that is what will take prominence. For instance, some of the later comets that have come near to the Earth have been in some ways associated with the planet Mars. And Mars, as you know, is associated with what you would think of as wars and famines and difficulties and destructions and earthquakes and such. Well, Certainly you have seen an increase in these as well. So it is not necessarily that the comet itself brings this by coming too close to the earth. It does not need to come so close to the earth that it becomes a threat in that way. Once it already comes into the solar system, it is already as near as need be. Meteors, then, bring about change in their own unique way and it is always the message somehow in some way the message of a meteor always has to do with an adjustment or a change and again as has been said it has more to do with which planet it is nearer to which one it is more in association with and even if it would seem to not be near enough to the earth or to the sun and have little to do with the earth well it still does, because the Earth, remember, is more relationship with the solar system. Whether or not you see something with a telescope or the naked eye, the Earth has perceived it and is already in relationship with that object, with that message. Now, the Earth has entered a cycle of increased messages at this time, meaning also increased change. Each time that a meteor comes in, near, or around the earth then, that message will change slightly. It will be altered, a little bit like a course is altered. When the course of a meteor is altered or the message to the earth is altered, everything about you in some ways, subtle or not, depending upon how you are arranged, is also then altered or in the process of altering. And here we can speak of great things as well. For instance, your purpose could be entirely altered by a meteor. How you see yourself in the world, reflected in the world, can also change. Whether you are an introvert or an extrovert, this can also be changed by the effects or the after effects of a comet. This means that in some way, whether or not it has come close to the earth, there has been some kind of impact with the comet. You see, so impact with a comet does not necessarily mean that all things must then touch the surface of the earth or touch you in some way. It already impacts you. Now, 
a comet of some years ago impacted greatly the planet Jupiter. Did that have an effect upon you? Yes or no? Well, yes. Remember, as we have just said, the comet is in the solar system. It is most associated with Jupiter. It has impacted there, and that change began to impact the Earth as well, and that all things began to change in terms of the systems, in terms of how success was measured, in terms of how growth came about. In case of what became more conscious versus unconscious or what was revealed from the deep into the now, the physical realities upon the earth began to change and more individuals began to awaken to something greater that was taking place. And so there were many other changes as well. However, this goes simply by way of saying that it is notable and in this case had more to do with Jupiter than the earth or so it seemed but meteors don't work quite that way. Now, again, there is an increase of meteors now in the solar system, in the vicinity of the Earth, in the vicinity of the Sun. Some of these have already been spotted by those that spot them, by those that seek them and note about them and consider them discovered, and others have not yet. Some of these have a very elongated, elliptical orbit that spans many, many years, many, many centuries, in fact, and others have a shorter cycle. Either way, it brings change now to the Earth, and now you will begin to see some of that change accelerated. So you will also see some of your growth and some of the changes within you in entering accelerated cycles now as well. The cycles will change so that all things will quicken yet again, as if energy somehow was doubled. Now, in some ways, there will be some that will have almost twice as much energy as they did before, unbounded energy or so it will seem. They could not accomplish more from day to night, and others it will have a different effect. It will seem as if all things are beginning to slow down. This does not mean come to a halt. This does not mean, again, work adversely. In fact, it may very much work to the credit of those that are affected this way because things may slow down so that they can accomplish more in one day than the others that are working at double duty but having unbounded energy. And this will also then affect the policies of certain countries in different way. Remember again, meteors are messengers, and so they will bring about idea then, ideas to change, ideas of how to do something or how not to do something. And you will see that some will feel as great pioneers, having great instincts to do this, go here, begin a new project, a new discovery. And again, others will have a complete other idea. And some countries, it will seem, will dig in their heels. They will make no change. They will see the world about them change in some ways and advance in some ways. And rather than wanting to move into the next century's advantage or technology or what it will be, it will be as if they have dug in their heels and taken a great step backward. And they will think that this is the better way. So you will begin to see that there is more dissension in the world coming now, more even than you know now. Countries that ally themselves one to the other, for it will be obvious who sees eye to eye or mind to mind and who doesn't. And it will seem for in some ways almost as if there is a living in diff two different worlds, two different worlds of thought. Some ideas will be coming together Others will never have pulled away from each other as if it were truly a tug of war. And in this case, it is again war that may come. It will come in some unexpected ways, and it will come even from some unexpected countries, those that would seem to have no squabble with another. But again, when there is a trigger, well, if the trigger is pulled, you know the effects that will come from that. 
and so comes again then great changes to the earth in that way brought about by the news if you like you may think of meteors as bringing a newspapers news items from far in the universe and again the impact will be to the earth and to humanity in terms of change and so change will come also in terms of illumination those things that had been under the microscope or away or unseen they will be magnified almost beyond proportion again this can be of benefit in some ways because new discoveries will come things that were not seen under the microscope before will be visible now and so there will be the ability to discover certain viruses certain cures for instance that could not have been found before and now there will be a cure for this and a cure for that and some of them will be almost near miraculous and then again there will be other viruses that are discovered from under the microscope and these will be new and some of these will bring a bit of panic to humanity what they will do about them or how to find them or where they were or how in the world they became unearthed so the comets that come the comets that come bring about some of this news as well to change for humanity to change and make adjustments upon the earth so it is well to be ready for this it is well to know about these aspects so that you can make adjustments to your own self as well now what can you do after all you could not particularly stop a comet from coming to the earth or be aware of a meteor more than the meteor shower that you may know about indeed it is more to be aware that you will be impacted and so with consciousness you can decide oh it is changing again this means that i am changing again what way might i change advantageously in what way can i see a greater success about myself or about life than i did before and so you see you will also then look with microscopes and telescopes and see within yourself changing frequencies changing advantages for you as well some of the other triggers that will come from this again is the desire to move the desire to be elsewhere where you will be the stationary place that you are where you have been living somehow it will seem unacceptable perhaps where you live whether it is your home or your apartment or your flat or where you are arranged in your city or your country somehow it will begin to feel very uncomfortable for many and you will simply wish to be elsewhere here i tell you to resist that thought unless you are certain that you do in fact wish to be elsewhere and that you do know where you wish that you would be or could be then by all means fully investigate every possibility and see how and where to place yourself when comets are first noted and when they are most proximate to the earth in fact where it is that they will make their closest approach to the earth that is when you will feel the intensity of certain desires and immediately after that immediately after they begin to move away from the earth that is when you will feel a certain aversion to a certain subject not necessarily to certain peoples this has more to do with certain subjects so if you had always wanted to address something but have not yet on the approach it will feel as if you are completely ready to do so and you may when it is in retreat when the comet is in retreat it is not that the urge not to do something comes instead comes in a different way you would chastise yourself and say why didn't i do it and i could have done it by now and you will berate yourself so it is important to note now in advance of this what you can do in your life or for your life remember that everything that affects you also affects the earth 
And so as you begin to make certain adjustments, the Earth will benefit by this as well. Likewise, the comets that come deeply, deeply affect and in some ways impact the Earth. So you will begin to see more Earth changes again on the advance again. You will begin to see that there is more light, illumination, on certain subjects, more pulling the rug out from under those unawares, if those that have not dealt with their concerns or their issues, as well as certain kingdoms and elements that simply do not respond in the way that one thinks that they should or the way that they did already respond at some point in the history, even if history was yesterday. Remember that history now wants to conclude business, as it were. You are coming to near the end of a great and powerful and long cycle. And so all things know this. All things and thoughts are aware of this, consciously and unconsciously. And simply put, business wants to conclude now. Endings are looking for beginnings, reconciliations, questions are searching for answers, you see. And so it is important for you to begin to note that. Allow yourself to enter this cycle. Allow yourself the grace by which to explore some of these subjects with perhaps, if possible, less resistance than you have found in these at other times. So it will go easier for you. Take the time in the evenings. Look to the evening sky and say of heaven and earth I am and I receive the balance of the two for it will be a little bit more difficult in the coming months to find yourself truly at peace and truly in balance it will be as if there is something on the approach you know it you can almost taste it you are not certain what to do about it but you feel as if you should do something. What can I do about it? What can I do about this? What can I do about me? And so as Gaia has said before, you must remember now that you are in fact human beings and one part divinity, one part earth and one part sky, if you like. In essence, the energy of the comets, well, it is already within you. It is you. You are that. And so it is not simply that you are an earth resident. You are a resident of this solar system. The entire solar system, every planet, every orbit, every sun and star and the midnight sun as well, now affects you, imposes its energy upon you, compresses certain thoughts, distills certain energies within you. It is important for you truly to begin to think of yourself as being more than a physical being with a mind and a body and even a soul. Even that is a limited perspective and you are more than that as well. So you are travelers. You are travelers in some way very much like a comet bringing news of where you have been and deciding where you will go next and attracting just the right energies just the right calculations, just the right collection of light and sound and frequency so that you can begin to illumine your path a little bit more from within and from without. Those guides and teachers who assist you are already aware of all that is happening. They have already charted a new course for you, but of course these coordinates must come together. It is a co-creative plan, you and your soul, you as your soul. So to feign in this moment that you have no idea what is taking place and no idea what to do next, that will not suit you in this moment. It is more important to begin to simply make adjustments. I adjust myself to a new light or a new truth or a new way to be, to adjust to adapt and to begin to look forward. Begin to allow the past to be the past. Allow endings to be endings so that there can be new beginnings. A new beginning does not mean that you must let everything from the past go. 
in a new beginning, those things of the past can also remake themselves and become new. Many different aspects of life can renew themselves. You can renew a contract, you see? And so it is an error to think that all those things that you are uncertain about must be left in the past and that you must begin again but with nothing, that you must begin empty. That is not necessarily true, but there are some that will have that opportunity and so they may choose it given that choice, that opportunity. Now we have touched upon the idea as well of meteors and meteor showers. So meteors are those aspects, pieces, if you like, of comets and asteroids in a physical sense that in some ways have a smaller place to play, a smaller aspect, a smaller impact in your life. So perhaps the idea or the news of a meteor might impact your day or a certain decision that you are about to make, but not your entire path, not your journey, not your purpose. So these are notable. They are worth noting in that way. There is still something new about them. They are still displacing a certain space that was occupied by something else as they very quickly move about, very, very quickly moving into and out of space or into and away from your important aspects. And so this movement then brings a quick change or a quick bit of news, something that you may have been waiting for, something that you may have been looking forward to. So a quick message or a quick answer without delay. Now if you receive this it is in fact important that you pay attention to it because as you well know meteors, comets, they do not come about every day even if here we are talking about a greater frequency. So if you will say not now, next time I'll make sure and wait and perhaps I'll be waiting for it next time, it may be a missed opportunity. So if there are answers that you have been waiting for and you receive the guidance or the answer, take advantage of it. Flow with the greater ideas. Take advantage of these and see how life presents itself to you. Meteors then and asteroids, they do not have as smooth a potential as the comet. They do not have a smooth an orbit. So the news that they bring may be somewhat erratic as well. The erratic nature then again may make you feel a little bit more uncomfortable, off center, as if you did not like the messenger. However, in this case, it is only important that you pay attention to the message itself. Check to see what you know, what you already know, what adjustments you may have already made. In terms of meteorites then, well, these are simply the bits, the sparks of life, if you like, the ones that will light up the night sky, the ones that will burn up coming into the Earth's atmosphere. So these are the ones that don't necessarily still impact the Earth, but they will come close enough, close enough. And those that then light up the sky near and around the time as well when there is a comet, if there is a comet that is noted during a certain cycle in very close proximity to the Earth and at the same time there is a meteor shower or there are meteors in evidence upon the Earth, then the effects of all that has been said will be pronounced. It will be more pronounced. It will be of a different quality and it will be even more notable. So it is important now to pay attention to all this. You need not study the news, you need not study the skies, but you become aware. Become aware of your place, of your position in the world, of your willingness to change that or to shift it or to become aware more 
of what you are and of your relationship to all things. We have titled this discussion News from Home. Well, where is that? Where is home? Home is beyond this galaxy. Home is beyond this solar system. Home is deep space. There is a horizon far into the deeper reaches of space. That horizon, what could be called an event horizon, is home to you. It is home to almost all upon the earth because it is home to the consciousness for the solar system or for this age. Every age has its own home, has its own beginning, where the ideas for that world began, where the plan for that path began. Every age has a home, and that home in the skies changes. So home for you during this age may not have been the same home that you had in another age. Think now. Perhaps you have had sessions or readings with certain gifted professionals and you have said to them, where do I come from? Where is my home? Perhaps it was said to you, well, most recently you were here and before that you were elsewhere and your home is not a permanent home or you spent a great deal of time here but now you are spending more time there. These aspects may not have been well explained to you, and truth be told, there are far too many individuals that have enough memories, even with their far-seeing gifts, to see that far or to know so much. And so much of this has been forgotten. It has been left behind in other ages. Your consciousness now has been turned down. It has been muted for a very long time. So you have forgotten much about who you are and how you are and how you came to be. You have forgotten much of your histories and so you have fallen in some way to think that others control you or influence you. Well, while this may be true, it is not nearly as true as the things that you have forgotten about the influence you have exerted over yourself. And so the fall is more of a tilt, you see. When you tilt the axis in some way, at times you slide, or what appears to be backslide. When this is the case, you simply forget. And we have spoken of this as well, how you will simply forget some things and remember others. So some of what comes will begin to influence you in that way more as well. And truly, now you will begin to see that memories indeed are almost erased for some. There will be more cases of amnesia, those who simply cannot remember who they are or why they are. And of course, it, the benefits of this is that it will allow you to construct a new purpose, if you like, a new identity, if you like that as all, and as well as to make changes without fear. If you did not know that you or your family has always, always lived in a certain city, then you may take a chance and say, but I choose to live elsewhere now. You see, if you forget that the economies of the world are off kilter, you may remember that you have every bit of ability to create success for you in one or more areas of life. So a remembering and a forgetting process is not necessarily of detriment to you as well. The difficulty is that these will be accelerated so that you will not have many opportunities to take your time and say, oh, oh yes, I remember now, that's why this is taking place. Yes, that's all right now because I remember you won't remember. You will forget what you will forget and you will remember new things that you had no idea about before. So there will be small bits of havoc in this as some individuals truly remake themselves, what they think about themselves, what they know about themselves, who and how they relate to themselves and to the earth. So a great many changes.
Once again, I announce to you that it is the time of changes and that these will be accelerated in more ways than you have already seen, and that harbingers, harbingers, news bringers, come near enough to the earth to bring about more changes upon the earth as well. So I bring you this news for the now time. I offer it to you now, place it into your hands, into your advantage as it would be. Now, in finality here, it is not doomsday that we are speaking of here. It is not a doomsday planet, it is not a doomsday comet, nor asteroid. These are natural phenomena with their own natural cycles. And these natural cycles are affected, impacted by all things, sun and moon and energies and trends and cycles of nature. And yes, stepping into new, grander, larger, beginning cycles as well. So you will see endings. You will see many different kinds of endings as well. And this will cause some to say that it is the end or the grandest ending, or the cataclysmic end, or the doomsday end. Now I tell you that soon, within a few short months, it begins in earnest. The doomsday clock, you will even hear that pronounced a bit more. And you will see that there are some that use that word whenever possible, even applying it to different aspects, whether applying it to an economy, or applying it to the world, or to another country, or like that. You will hear now the doomsday word more than others. So I bring it to you as a caution as well. And perhaps I may ask that you will leave it from your vocabulary, if at all possible. It is a time of new beginnings. It is a time of new choices. It is a time of invitations. It is time to decorate your life, to reimagine your life, to recreate your life, and if at all possible, from the inside out would be the better, easier way to go than from the outside in. So be it, sweet ones. The next moment will bring us together soon enough. I bid you good day.